Instagram. Yeah, perfect. So my name is Max. Uh, I'm one of the two co-founders of Misto. Uh, we're essentially building open payroll for Europe, which means we're building out what open banking has done for data stored in bank accounts. We're doing exactly the same thing for data stored in HR and payroll systems. So typical use case would be you want to get a mortgage. Today you have to share all of the information regarding your employment income manually. With us, you can do that directly from the HR or payroll system from your employer. Like, look, I think, I mean, like the, the predominant use cases for us would be one, uh, mortgage finance, car finance, and even potentially like rental referencing, right? So you probably have rented a house at some point in the UK. Typically what would happen at some point, they would ask you, hey, uh, could you please verify your employment income? Then they send you some kind of email, you upload a bunch of documents. Um, the issue with that is, First of all, I mean, for you it's inconvenient, right? You need to log into some kind of system, download a bunch of PDF documents and upload them again. Probably not something you do on the spot while looking at a flat, right? So you might forget, right? So for the partner, not the best customer experience. But even more than that, across the population, there's some people who lie, right? And imagine you're a landlord and now you rent your house to someone that ends up not paying you, right? That's a massive risk. So what we allow you to do is we essentially provide a link very similar to a PayPal checkout. You click that link, say verify my income and uh, employment status now. Then you see a bunch of payroll providers and employers that we cover. At the moment we cover probably 23 to 24 million UK employees, right? So that's roughly 70% of the population. You put in the login details that you have from your employer already today. And then as soon as you've done that, we go inside the system, we extract information and we share it with the partner. Let's say in that case, it was a rental referencing company. Um, and so they have 100% verified data. They can do it right on the spot. You can do it on your phone. So better customer experience, less risk for the partner and overall a better experience because of open data. Essentially, you get the link. You can receive that link either like embedded in the partner's customer journey. Let's say you are in an online lending journey, want to get a mortgage, um, or uh, you get an email with a link that you click. Right now, the process itself takes maybe like 15 to 20 seconds. Right? I mean, essentially, you have to just uh, give two consents. Right? Accept privacy policy terms and conditions. You get to understand a little bit more about our solution. And then you select your payroll provider or employer and you put in the login details. Now the question is, do you remember those details in the moment? So this is probably where it might take some more time, but uh, we see also that these rates are getting higher and higher every day. So probably 20 seconds out of that five to 10 seconds until the partner has uh, already received the data. So like, look, I mean, uh, open payroll, yes, it's a new, a new concept. Overall, when you think about like open finance or open data in general, right? I mean, we essentially launched a company last year. We were one of the, we were actually the first player in Europe to launch with this concept. Um, the, U the US market is a little bit more advanced. So there's like five, six companies that launched like three, four years ago. So the market is maturing a lot more there, right? So it's clearly an innovation that is happening everywhere, right? I mean, we're essentially connected in between all these companies. There's some people covering the US, LATAM, Asia, and now uh, with us, Europe. And so there's also some people looking to work on Africa. So overall, it's a new concept. But in the end, it's just part of this idea that us as consumers, we should be completely empower and empowered by our own data, right? When you think about open banking, that's been like the first step, right? Now I can share this data, but there's a lot of verticals which can be very exciting. Now we cover payroll, right? It's certainly a very important one, but we see other verticals that we're excited about, such as, for example, insurance or even asset management data or pensions in the UK. I mean, the, the US dynamics are certainly a little bit different, right? I mean, the U US market is a lot bigger, right? I mean, and a lot more concentrated. Whereas in Europe, you need to go market by market and there's still slight customization that's of course making it tougher. Now, in terms of how the technology works is very similar. Now, one big difference is that when you compare it to um, the alternative or like in some kinds of competitive solution of open banking in the US, um, the technology stack is almost exactly the same, right? So what Plaid has built is very similar to what the open uh, payroll players have built. Now in Europe, it's very different because of the regulatory environment, right? Whereas open banking is completely regulated, open payroll is not. And that from a technology perspective makes it actually much tougher to build out. Um, so there are certain learnings, but of course dynamics really change from market to market. And there's a certain level of like, we want to be more privacy first, right? So that means we at the moment really focus on one time single access. We don't store login details and things like, things are like that. Like, look, I think um, 
overall, it's like a very fragmented market when you think about like open banking. Even open banking today has still has challenges, right? Because if you think about the UK, there's 300 plus banks getting access to these banks, even though they're obliged to give access, it's still very tough. So that means in some cases, APIs do not exist, right? And so you have to work around that. Now with HR and payroll, this is even less professionalized and there's a much longer tail, right? Of course, there are similar solutions to, let's say, Barclays. There would be in the UK, would be a payroll provider like, like Morpay or Sage, right? And of course, there is these big players and, it, and it's very good because they're centralized. But then there's a very long, long tail of employers and payroll systems that are much less professionalized. And so I think this is the biggest challenge, but this is also why what we do really creates um, value from an infrastructure perspective. So we don't really want to do any analytics, right? So in open banking, you see now a lot of companies really working on the analytics part because the access is easy. Now with what we do, the analytics part certainly is valuable, but there's companies that will do that much better than us. We really focus on building out the pipes, enabling everyone and all the use cases on top of that. Well, like, look, I mean, uh, Europe has like 600 million uh, like uh, inhabitants, right? So the European market is certainly a super important one. Um, it's, a, it's one that is now rising and rising in terms of digitization levels, right? I mean, like the UK is probably the, the predestined market to start off with just because of the digitization uh, of HR and payroll overall. Um, I think, I mean, like, the start is, of course, this income and employment verification piece, right? But over time, you can build even more interesting things around this. Like, for example, we even get inbound requests where people are asking us, like, hey, how about we use your verification solution, not necessarily for income or even employment, but just for identity, right? So in the future, for some cases, instead of using a non fighter where you have to hold a credit card, uh, like your, your passport next to your face, um, you might just be connecting with your payroll account to verify yourself that way, right? So we really see this as becoming more and more common, just like when you thought 10 years ago, hey, like how often do I need to show my ID? Almost never. Um, Nowadays, it's almost every single app that you log in, you do some kind of verification. And we see the same happening with uh, employment and income. Now, one other part that's interesting is payroll is always the gateway to where your salary goes, right? And with our API, we can enable consumers to make more convenient switches. So think about a neobank wanting to have someone start depositing their salary, right? In the future, instead of like, hey, writing an email to HR, which almost nobody does, or like logging in and like doing it by hand, people don't do it, right? With us, we can just put a button, say like, hey, click here in order to switch your salary account from your old bank to new bank XYZ, right? And this is also something that we are very excited about with Open Payroll. Like for us, um, like we explicitly have decided from day one that we really want to focus on the full-time employment piece, right? It's a tougher nut to crack because of course, it's got a very big long tail, right? Rather than, for example, gig work where you have a lot of centralized platforms and not so many, right? So we said like, look, this is our core focus and we're really focusing on that in the moment, at the moment in the UK, right? Bringing up that coverage is our number one priority. Now at the same time, from a product perspective, we're also looking at potentially adding on more OCR and fraud prevention uh, technologies to enable manual upload, right? Because when you're realistic, you will never be able to cover 100% of the population. Um, so this is on the product side. Now, um, when we think about geography, UK first, and then uh, end of Q3, beginning Q4, uh, German market launch, and then beyond that, country by country expansion. Well, I think, I mean, like, I think open finance is certainly something um, that will enable much more access and much better uh, customer experience everywhere, right? Um, open banking has been the, the starting block of that, right? I mean, payments initiation, on the other hand, income verification or like account uh, access. Um, but there are certain other verticals where I see like a lot of uh, opportunity, right? I mean, we are of course most excited about open payroll, but um, when you think about the topic of insurance that I mentioned earlier, this is also very interesting. Think about the fact that in the future, you might be able, when you look at new policy acquisition, like let's say I want to get new car insurance, you might be able to connect with your existing account at your current insurer share all the data that's already stored in there and then a broker would just be immediately like hey look these are the five alternatives that I can offer you with exactly the same coverage just because you can access that now the big challenge is always interoperability and accessibility right I mean like as of now there is no regulatory environment which pushes to openness necessarily beyond open banking right but we're seeing momentum of all the players looking at it but of course we are excited about accelerating that but of course that remains the biggest challenge but this is why also like building it up and having these intermediate players such as ourselves and others for other verticals um, is very valuable 
what's the best use case? Wow, look, I think, I mean, I think payments initiation is like certainly probably the biggest one, right? I think like within B2B is where I see personally the biggest opportunity, right? As of today, all of the invoices that I receive, um, as much as digital as our uh, partners and like providers want to be, they essentially send me a PDF document and then I log into my bank account and I make a payment, right? So I think um, B2B payments is uh, very exciting and the initiation there is, there's a big opportunity there. Um, I think in terms of volumes, right, growth rates, like I would probably say like a 30 to 40 percent growth rate by this time next year is certainly something that is feasible, right? I mean, we're seeing like consumer adoption has already started, but this will only become more and more, right? Especially with the regulatory changes that we see in the UK, which allow also the recurring access for longer periods, etc. So I think like this is, this is probably what I would be most excited about, like B2B payments, probably the, the biggest one initiation, and then of course growth 30 to 40 percent.